Let us begin worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down before your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let us praise God. Eternal God and Father, you are the source of all life, the fountain of all wisdom, the wellspring of all grace. Your days are without end, your loving mercies without number. We depend on you and we remember your goodness to us and to those who have gone before us. We tell your story to every generation. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God of a pilgrim people, your church. You are our God ahead of us, leading us, guiding us and calling us. You are the Lord God, the all wise, the all compassionate. To you we lift our hearts and we worship you, one God forever and ever. Let us confess our sins to you. Whenever I say the words, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, most merciful God, for sinning against you in thought and word and deed. Lord, have mercy for failing to love you with our whole heart. Lord, have mercy for failing to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins to God with a moment of silence.
we are assured that our sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, and rejoice in his goodness and grace. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. for our nation and um, our church and and the world dear Lord you are our healer show your compassion to us in this turmoil come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally Heal those who are sick and support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the virus. Make us vigilant, attentive and proactive in the eradication of all diseases that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond fear and timidity that too easily we, we fall into. Lord, strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, the caregivers, the nurses, doctors, all who commit themselves 
caring for the sick and their families. Give them strength and wisdom during this time. Inspire and give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Sustain all workers and business owners who have suffered loss of livelihood due to shutdowns. And also as the lockdown eases soon, Lord, also protect all of us during this time. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation and act of justice. Heal our world and heal our bodies. Strengthen our hearts and our minds in the midst of turmoil. Give us hope and peace. Comfort all those who are worried and in despair and help us to trust in you always, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Today's reading is taken from John 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. 
Jesus the way to the Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority, rather it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things that than this, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of God. Nothing is so painful to the human mind as a great and sudden change. So writes Mary Shelley in Frankenstein. And I wonder if you would agree, you know, with the current health crisis going on that we're in the grip of right now, we're all experiencing change of a dramatic and immense scale. And for so many people, it's a deeply difficult, painful time. But change comes into our lives in so many different ways. Twelve and a half Years ago, Hannah and I brought home from hospital, proudly, uh, a beautiful, bouncing baby boy. And three other children have followed in the subsequent years. And nothing has been the same since. Everything has changed. Whether it's moving house or uh, dropping a child off at university for the first time, uh, retiring from work, suffering the, the difficulties of, of ill health or uh, new financial challenges, stepping out into a whole new career. We can experience change in so many different ways and there's times in which that's exhilarating and exciting and it feels adventurous and releasing and it's worth celebrating. Uh, other times, as Mary Shelley uh, so pointedly suggests, it, it can be a, a deeply troubling, difficult, challenging time. You know, this uh, passage that we're looking at today in, in John's Gospel falls within a wider passage. And we do well, I think, to, to take note of the wider passage within which it falls. And, and it's part of this longer discourse. Um, and the theme of this discourse is that the, the, the time has come, the hour has come. Jesus is no longer going to be with his disciples. And, and he's doing everything during this, the, these final moments with them um, to equip them, to prepare them, to help them to navigate through this radical change that is coming their way, that is um, beyond anything that they might expect and, and beyond anything that they might imagine. And Jesus is trying to do everything he can to help them to navigate their way through it. And, and so we see in uh, John chapter 13, Jesus on bended knee, towel in one hand, bowl of water in the other hand, washing his disciples' feet, giving them this most dramatic and profound vision and image and picture of servanthood and humility that, that gives them this message to love one another as he has loved them. And in, in later chapters, he goes on to speak about the, the gift and the promise of the Holy Spirit who will be with them and alongside them and in them, God's ongoing presence with them to be their comfort and their guide. He forewarns of trouble and persecution, but promises his peace. 
He encourages them and urges them to remain in his love, to, to remain in him as a branch remains in the vine, to remain in his love and to follow his commandments and follow the way of life that he's been leading them into and has been teaching them all about. And, and having said those things and so many other things too, right at the end of it all, he prays this, this powerful and extraordinary prayer over all of them. Jesus is doing everything he can in these final moments with them to prepare them for what's coming, to help them to navigate through the change and the challenges that are coming their way. And right in the heart of it, chapter 14, the bit that we're focusing particularly on today, Jesus speaks directly to their fears and their uncertainties, their worries, their anxieties. Um, any of those feelings familiar to any of us right now? Um, and Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Trust can look like a number of different things, can't it? For my younger children, trust can look like leaping out of a tree and, and believing that I'm going to be there to catch them. And should I accidentally drop them, they trust that they can also go to their mum to get patched up with plasters and cuddles. And they live so, uh, as well as Hannah and I can manage it, within this environment where increasingly they, they, they grow to trust in the care and the affection of their mum and dad who will provide for them and protect them and want good things for them. And as Jesus says to his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled, trust in God, trust also in me. He's urging them towards this same kind of childlike faith. Then he wants them to know that when trouble hits as it's about to, when their whole world gets turned upside down as it's about to, that they can go on trusting, that they should not despair, that they should not give up, that they should know that, that God remains sovereign, that God remains in control, that he is with them in difficulty. He, he's their ever-present help in trouble. He will show himself strong in their weakness. He will show his faithfulness and his goodness to them. Never give up. Um, never, never despair. Keep going because I am with you. Keep trusting in me. Keep looking to me and leaning into me. I, I love this uh, Corrie ten Boom quote. Uh, where she says, if you're riding on a train and it goes through a tunnel and gets very dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the driver. And it's this same kind of trust that Jesus is urging his disciples towards. You know, our personal stories of God's faithfulness in our lives are, can be such an encouragement, um, not only to remind ourselves of in times of difficulty, but also as an encouragement to other people. And if you were with us last week, you'll know that we're encouraging you, if you can tell a, a, a quick story of God's goodness and faithfulness in, in your life in a one minute video, we would love to be able to include that within our, our services on a Sunday. So do get in touch if you're able to do that. You know, shepherds in, um, in ancient Israel at the time of the, the Old Testament, Give us a great example of this. They, on, on their shepherd's staff, they used to carve or etch into that reminders of God's goodness to them, reminders of God's faithfulness to them, times when he'd shown himself strong, times when they knew that he was present with them in difficulties, promises that he'd made to them through the scriptures of his, of his goodness and his, cares that, his care that meant a lot to them. They etched these on to their staffs. And with that understanding, it helps us as we, as we read Psalm 23, where it says that, you know, though I walk through the deepest darkness, you are with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God's, uh, the, the story of God's faithfulness in our lives, the story of his goodness in our lives is such an encouragement in times of difficulty. And trust looks like this. It, it looks like holding on with confidence to God's goodness and faithfulness, no matter what our circumstances and challenges might be. Trust looks like other things too. I think trust looks like believing that God loves me just as I am. This can be one of the hardest things to trust. We can think of every reason why God shouldn't love us or why God wouldn't love us. But trust looks like believing that he does, that I don't have to earn his approval or that I don't have to deserve his affection by what I do, by how incredible a person I am, how impressive a person I, I am and how perfectly I live my life. He loves me as I am. And, and can I trust him with his word to me about that? Can I simply 
trust and rest in the truth of that and receive his love, receive his total forgiveness, his total acceptance of me. Trust looks like that too, I think. Trust also looks like walking in his ways, you know, looking through his word, learning of his word about how I should live my life, what his wisdom for me is in terms of how I walk, in terms of how I live my life. Learning what he says about relationships and about money, about compassion and care for, for others, about forgiving other people, about walking in love, about turning the other cheek, about laying down my rights and, 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 and picking up my cross and following him. Do I trust everything that he says to me about that and, and walk in that? You know, one of the things that Jesus says in this passage we're looking at is, um, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Do we follow it, him in his way and, and do we stand on his truth and live the kind of life that he lives in us for us to live? I am the way, the truth and the life. You know, trust looks like different things. On this night that Jesus was later betrayed as he sits around the table with his disciples. He has so much to say to them, so much that he wants to um, equip them with and prepare them for. And I wonder for us today and over the coming days as we sit with Jesus, what is it that he would say to us to help us to navigate our way through the difficulties we're in right now, whatever challenges we might be facing in life. What would Jesus say to us to help us through, to help us walk wisely, to give us confidence in his affection for us and his faithfulness towards us? What would he speak into our spirits today? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time, this time of listening to your word, listening to what you would say to us. Lord, we thank you that you want us to grow in trust, having confidence in your goodness and faithfulness towards us, that we would know that you would um, always be with us. You are always with us. You are always beside us. You give us wisdom for life. You give us strength in our weakness. Lord, help us to know your love in fresh ways in our lives today. Help us to walk with you. Help us to trust you. Lord, may our spirits be open to listening to you, that we would hear all that you would whisper into our hearts. Maybe the reassurance of your love for us. Maybe your reassurance that we are forgiven and we stand before you holy and blameless because of Jesus and our trust in him as our saviour. Maybe you want to challenge us to step out in a new way, believing you for fresh things. Maybe you want to help us to forgive someone that's hurt us or ourselves to ask forgiveness of someone that we've hurt. Lord, whatever it may be, may we hear your words of guidance and comfort and love and walk in all the ways that you set before us for your glory. Amen. Let us give thanks for offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to offer to you Lord, please bless these tithes and offerings that we may have the wisdom to use it for your cause. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The past few months have been very difficult for all of us due to the pandemic. However, as it is written in Joshua 1 verse 9, we should be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Today we have a sharing from my brother Eric about what he has learned 
during these times of difficulty and, and uncertainty. I talk to my brother regularly, so I've seen firsthand how he's, he reacted at the start of lockdown and how far he's come by relying on God. Hello everyone. First off, I'd like to thank Reverend Unsung for giving me this opportunity to share about how the lockdown has affected me and also for his messages of encouragement during this very difficult time and his support has been very uplifting uh, along with all the support I've received from family and friends. Um, thank you all and I'd like to keep this brief. Um, to get to where I am now amidst the lockdown, a lot of things had gone horribly wrong. Prior to this, I had lost my pay increase at work when my project was shut down. Um, and following on from that, a life-changing promotion was taken away from me when I had already signed the contract. Two weeks before the lockdown, I received my mortgage in principle. Um, this was given to me on the basis that I had finally met their criteria of having no breaks in my contract for 18 months. It was exactly 18 months then. And my work contract extension has just arrived um, on email, waiting for me to sign. This was um, a result of surviving four projects and six mass office floor wide sackings. I was very lucky. Um, and most importantly, my wedding planning was finally complete. I had just received the printed invites and the itinerary which was a year in planning, was solidified and a few thousand pounds worth of deposits were paid. Um, according to my budgeting, come September of this year, I would have my dream wedding for my fiancé and enough money for a deposit for a house. Needless to say, um, a lot of this has gone wrong and some of it is probably not going to happen anymore. The most jarring thing I realised uh, was that it's easy to praise God when everything is going right. However, when everything around you is falling apart, it feels like God has shut the door, double locked it and pulled down the shutter. And I can only hear the sound of my groaning amidst all the silence. During this time, someone I know said that Satan was to blame for this virus, which didn't sit right with me. Because in Job, we can see that nothing happens without God's permission. And in this instance, I, I did not so much as think that my plans were ruined by the devil, but rather I was overruled by God. And I believed I prayed for good things and God said no. To my shame and in my frustration, I posed this question to my mother. I asked, if I can't count on God for all the little things, how can I count on God for the big things? During this time, my sister Monica kept telling me to focus on all the things I have instead of everything that I'd lost. The more I thought about loss, the more I thought back to Job. No human has suffered as much as this man. Compared to him, my suffering was a minor inconvenience. I complained enthusiastically to anyone who would listen to how my life was ruined, but perhaps I was the rich fool that was building bigger storehouses. Um, a perfect example of how a man proposes and God disposes. Perhaps in focusing on work, money, house and the wedding, um, I was being wise for a moment and a fool forever if I had continued on my trajectory away from God. I know that everyone at this time is going through troubles, trials, temptations and testing. Um, not just me. And reading the book of Job, we can see that Job was exalted. He wasn't spurned during his time of suffering. God let his reputation ride on the response of this one man. When God seemed most far away from Job, God was giving Job microscopic scrutiny. God seemed absent, but in fact, he had never been closer. And perhaps this is true for us too. Um, maybe everything hangs on the balance of the response of one man. What, what I can say... Um, is that God in the Bible never tells someone that they're going through a trial and if they wait six months, everything would be okay. You don't really want to be that person that gives up after five months and 29 days into your trial. God made a promise to Abraham and he had to wait 25 years. God showed Joseph 
a dream promising greatness, and he was sold to slavery and spent most of his adult life in an Egyptian prison. Moses was shown the promised land after having been lost in the wilderness for 40 years, and David was a hunted, hunted fugitive during Saul's reign, before, long before he was king. Uh, so during my minuscule um, month plus time of lockdown, I got to take a rest, uh, a break, and it was something that I never would have taken if I was working. I had a reprieve from social meetings and events that were basically wearing me down. I had time to think, and I became infinitely closer to my mother, whom I neglected through work, wedding planning, and house hunting. I just didn't have time for her. And my pride was also taken down a few hundred notches when I was out of work, and my fiancé, who was still working, continually like offered me words of support and comfort, and it was something that I really greatly needed. Finally, when I was able to work from home, um, I was disappointed that it was all over. The holiday was over. It came as a surprise when I received a parcel um, outside my door, and I was had a phone call, and I was told that I needed to start work immediately. Inside the parcel was my work computer. It was then that I realized it. Um, I was complaining to God for both having work, um, for, for, for not having work and for having work. Perhaps the most valuable lesson that was learned here was that, um, and I, like I didn't think about it until Reverend Unsung asked me to give this little speech. Perhaps the two days in life that we should never worry about is yesterday and tomorrow. Maybe this is why we pray for daily bread and why God provided manna to the Israelites that perished after one day. What this lockdown has shown me is that the things that I trust in today, like money and human plans, will fail me tomorrow. The answer, to answer the question that I posed my mother is because we trust in God for the eternal things, such as our salvation, that we should not worry or doubt God when the little things don't work out, not the other way around. Um, there is a precedence in the Bible for trials, like when the Israelites were cornered at the edge of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was closing in on them like a flood. They had their backs against the wall. And the question is, like, were the Israelites still expected to trust God? And the answer is absolutely yes. Therefore, my conclusion is that we need to trust God just because, just because God has not answered our prayers now doesn't mean he's not ever going to answer it. If God was to answer it, he has a thousand and one ways to answer it that we didn't even think about. When we have problems, we tend to look around us for answers when we should actually be looking up. If God is responsible for everything, as the book of Job would suggest, then he's responsible for my friends, my family, my 18 months of contract, and all six sackings that I survived. He's also responsible for the food that I eat and the water that I drink. So if, if food and water comes from God and everything else comes from God, then it's only right that it comes from him, we consume it and we return it back to him in praise. So praise be to God that gives and takes away. God never promised smooth sailing in life, but he did promise a safe landing at the end of it. And for that, I am thankful. Um, that is all from me. And I feel embarrassed uh, making this speech because I have given up on God so many times since my triumphant baptism. But I know God has never given up on me. So, uh, amen. Thank you. Bye.
Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Today, we are celebrating our church Thanksgiving anniversary. Does any one of you know how old exactly is CCEMC? And also, in which year CCEMC start our English ministry, so-called the International Service or IC? If you have the correct answer, why not just give me a ring? I shall give you a lollipop as a little present for you. Yep, my dear, my, my dear brothers and sisters, CCEMC is 24 years old this year. 24 years, I might say it is just a long way. Looking back, we found how God moved some brothers and sisters to open their house until we established a church so-called CCEMC. And CCEMC embarked a new journey since then. And they, we start uh, IC in 2012. Beside our regular Cantonese and English service, we also start our Mandarin service uh, at least once a month since last year. That is the reason for us why we need to share our praises and gratitude to our God. And may this afternoon you can live out your thanksgivings with me for CCEMC. Glory to God. May the Lord grant great power and through the grace of Jesus becoming flesh and the feeling of the Holy Spirit and able CCEMC to become a church greatly used by God. Now, I would like to invite two stewards to share with us how they feel about CCEMC. Let me leave the floor for them to do the sharing. Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, Lyndon here. Uh, happy church anniversary. Uh, as you can see, uh, I'm currently outside in the park. Um, it's a gorgeous day. Uh, it's 7.30 in the evening and the, and the sun is still shining. Um, it, it is, I think, a bit breezy, but hopefully you can um, uh, hear me well. Uh, so, um, Pastor has um, asked um, the stewards team to provide um, uh, some sharing, uh, I guess, in the weekend of our, our church anniversary. Uh, the first question he asks is, um, if we were to give thanks to God, for what he's done within, um, I guess, CCMC, uh, what would that be? Um, I guess I'd just like to say, you know, from a, a personal note, uh, for those who, 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 you know, who, who don't know, I mean, um, myself, my, my family, Nissi and two boys, Caden and Chase, we've, uh, we've spent, I think, almost 10 years um, at this church. Uh, both my boys were, were, were baptised here. Um, and uh, we've spent a... I guess a seven part of our our our, our life um, serving and also worshiping God. So we thank God that we're able to to find um, find find Epson. Um, so that's on a personal note. But um, I guess um, 
one of the the, the things to to give thanks for um, in my mind is um, uh, apart from the fact that uh, I guess we're we're you know we're a very welcoming church. We're very uh, unique in the sense that we have um, uh, different services. Um, different people, different backgrounds, ethnicity, speaking Cantonese, Mandarin, English, we have different services. We have free services, in fact. Um, but you might not know this, but uh, we also have a fourth service, and that's the, the, the junior church uh, ministry. Um, and so I'd just like to, I guess, thank God um, for, for, for blessing our church uh, with, with children. Um, so that we're able to, if you will, grow uh, organically. But maybe more importantly is um, that God has blessed um, our church uh, with um, you know, those who are helping out, so the, the parents who are actually teachers and helpers um, within this ministry. So in some ways, as um, you know, highlighted in, in, in Proverbs, um, they are you know, being a role model leading by example and uh, I guess training um, the way that um, our children should go so that uh, when they are old they will not um, depart from from God and um, I thank God that uh, he's able to bless our, our, our ministry and, and um, also encourage um, parents uh, as well as um, you know uh, other people to to help out um, in this ministry now the uh, the second question that pastor had uh, had asked is um is what um is our i guess expectation if you will for this uh, uh for CCMC uh what would we like this church to to become um i i guess if this was like a a um a corporate question if you will um then obviously one way of, of measuring, uh, I, guess, I guess, success is, uh, you know, if the, if the corporate was, was profitable, was large, um, many people, you know, it's, it's big. Um, and that would be a, a, a perfect corporation. Uh, but I guess as, as, we, uh, as we all know, uh, a church is not a corporate. Um, a church is not perfect. Um, our church is not um, a big; it is a, a small, uh, quite intimate church. But one of our our, our great strengths, um, if you will, in our in our church is um, we we attract many people from different backgrounds. Uh, we have the element of um, uh, not um, well, I guess, diversity. And in some ways, there 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 typically is, I guess, some expectation uh, that. Um, we need to aspire to be, you know, a perfect church where we have a, a fantastic choir, perfect choir, perfect pastor, perfect stewards, perfect congregation. But as, as we know, this is, um, this is not what a church is supposed to, to be. A church is a, a place where we minister for the, the poor uh, and the weak. Um, and as I guess First Corinthians, you know, highlights, um, you know, a, a church is um, is us. You know, we are the body of Christ, where where Jesus is the head of that body, uh, and we should in- encourage, um, you know, definitely unity in terms of um, having the same goals and visions, if you will, in terms of how to uh, to create a, a a church in which um, is. Uh, is pleasing to God, um, but we shouldn't necessarily expect uh, perfection. So I guess the the uh, the, the short answer uh, is is that um, I, I would uh, very much in- encourage us to continue on um, being diverse, encourage uh, us to continue to use our our different um, gifts, uh, our talents uh, to to serve God. Uh, and to, yeah, continue to um, you know create a church which um, is uh, is pleasing to God with the abilities that we have. So that's all I had to had to share. Um, I wish you all a uh, a blessed day, and um, 
very much hope to see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. A couple was celebrating their 25th anniversary and their 60th birthday. The wife gave her husband a lamb. When he rubbed it, a genie popped out and gave him one wish. The husband said, I wish that I had a wife that was 20 years younger than me. So the genie made him 80 years old. Be careful what you wish for. And here we are celebrating CCEMC's 24th birthday under lockdown. Now, what is the birthday wish you have for our church? It is possible that you can believe in the right things, know the true God and do nothing about it. As you look at your life, your work, your family, your relationships, what does your life say about you? If you were put on trial today and accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? My one and only wish for this year is, when we finally see Jesus face to face, you will be greeted by him who says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. And only through working together that we can recapture the mission of the New Testament church. The past 24 years is behind us now. We can do nothing about it. We can only live in today and prepare for tomorrow. I don't know about how the final chapters of CCMC's story will be written. But until then, let's get down on our knees and ask God to deepen our passion for lost souls. Remember what William Temple said, the church is the only society in the world which exists for the benefit of its non-members. Happy birthday, church. Thank you.
Brothers and sisters, let us stand and receive the blessing from our God. Let's bow our head and pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts in appreciation for who you are. You are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth. We bless your name this day, for you are deserving of praise. You so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, to save us from our sin. Lord, you have blessed us as a church over the past 24 years through good times and difficult times. We have filled your hands of grace, forgiveness, and healing. Today, as a congregation, we want to publicly express our gratitude to you. We thank you for many opportunities we have had to serve you, to demonstrate our love for you. We thank you for the many among us who made possible the ministries of church programs. We express our thanks to you for your faithfulness over the years. Your love is shown in the uniting of CCEMC in the bound of Christ. Even in our different languages, we are reminded that people of every tribes, every tongue, and every nation worship you. Lord God of heaven, may our worship of you come from the depth of our soul each day. May we be true worshippers of you, worshipping you in spirit and truth. May, we, may our heart overflow with love for you. For you are the only and the holy God. May our press defeat the enemy. We know the better belongs to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We cry out to you. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. May we walk humble before you. Thank you, Lord God our Redeemer, who cover us with the blood of the Lamb, taking away our sin and shame. Purify our heart, that we may be set on fire for you. Revive us with your Holy Spirit. Set our feet upon a rock, for you are our rock, and establish our steps. Put a new song in our mouth, so that Many will see and feel and put our trust in you, Lord Jesus. You are the Lord, our God, and there is no others. Now, may the grace of the Lord God, the Father, grant us peace. The love of Jesus brings us wholeness. The breath of the Holy Spirit instill passions and the unity between them give you strength for this and every day. Amen. Please be seated, my dear brothers and sisters. I hope I can see you again next week and bless you to have a wonderful week ahead. See you again. Bye-bye.